Assalamualaikum alaikum students so this video i'm going to talk about um, how to implement uh, the implementation details of this uh, this the, the whole search thing that we have seen uh, in uninformed search and again this is the same strategy is going to work for search as well informed search the, the idea i want to talk about talk about is the fact that um, the implementation of the search problem is so uh, is similar for uh, for every such algorithm and the, the main thing that differs is the fact that some um, the, 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 the queues are different for different search strategies for example breadth first search is v4 for depth first search is l4 for uniform cost search is, it is a priority queue so let me just show you uh, an implementation in java so it does not matter what the implementation is in it, it could be in python it could be in java it does not matter the thing that matters is the fact that that, that the implementation will remain this and the idea will remain the same irrespective of irrespective of the programming language so what you are seeing over here is the fact that i have a class called search and the, the, the you have two important things this is the search problem and the search strategy and that the idea that the search problem and search strategy could both be independent of the search. search is independent of the strategy and the search problem that we have seen in the different algorithms we have the pseudo code of the different algorithms basically the search does not depend upon uh, the problem and on the strategy so we can just plug it in in the search and we can have a good solution uh, to work with okay so what we do we will initialize our search with the problem and the search strategy and when we solve something then we're going to do uh, just to have a count so we first thing to do is to uh, by using our search problem we'll get the initial state remember the search problem contains the initial state the successor function and the code test and all the necessary information that's used to describe what such problem so every problem will have its own implementation of, of this thing then we can uh, we can get the we can use this initial state to initialize the root node and remember the difference between in state and node the state is the representation of the problem while root node is part of the search tree and it has a parent a child a depth a cost and but initial the state has neither of it neither of them so uh, we will initialize the root node by the initial state and uh, it does not have a parent initial uh, the depth is zero the cost is zero and we'll and remember the action is a start action then we will have a uh, duplicate map and this duplicate map could be a set as well but uh, we have presented as a map and this map represents a closed list so again every time we are have, we have seen some node we are not going to re uh, see that thing again so th this is just an implementation detail so again i have started by putting the root node in the duplicate map so in any time uh, we are going to re re get uh, regenerate this initial mm -hmm. state in, in the form of cycle we are not going to uh, work on it we can just ignore that okay. so we put the root node into our search strategy and strategy could be breadth first or depth first does not matter i'm going to run this loop unless until and unless the uh, the, uh, the 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 queue is empty or the node is, uh, the stack is empty. So we're going to fetch the first node from the list and then increase the counter the number of nodes that we have expanded. Okay, and then we can see whether this problem is the current goal state or not. If it's the goal state, then we are done. If it's not, then we are going to uh, we go to full search for. If it's, if if it's the goal state, then we are done. We are done this node. If not. We are going to ask the search problem to generate the successors of this particular state that is represented by the node. So we will have all these successors. We are going to put these successors in, uh, make a node and put it inside uh, the fringe list or the strategy. The duplicate map will verify that the node that we are going to expand has not already been expanded. If it has already been expanded, we will ignore it uh, because we are not going to create a cycle. So our algorithm will have a finite number of nodes to work with. Okay. So we're going to create a node, uh, and you can see now the the new state is the state represented by this node. The parent is the previous node. The current node, which have, we have explored over here, is the parent of this current is the new node. The depth is the one at more than the current node's depth. Okay. The cost is the uh, the the cost that is used to generate the state plus the cost of the current node because the cost is accumulative and it will keep on adding and the action that that took you from the previous state to this state i'm going to add this thing to our search strategy and the duplicate map uh, so that we no, do not exp expand this node uh, over and over again and we keep on repeat this process until we are done 
and uh, so if we have the node of a uh, track view of the node then you can see then after every node will have a state a parent node a depth uh, uh, depth is always integer the cost could be double or a real number an action that took you from the previous state to this state any such problem that we need to define will have will should have the following thing the initial state the success the generate successor function the goal test and uh, the heuristic value that we will see for for the upcoming lecture that we will see in and every state uh, could have the heuristic value the action cost and uh, a hash code just for to take the duplicate map and uh, duplicate of this thing and we can and, and similarly for the strategy so if you can if we can look at a strategy this every such strategy uh, will have a function should have a function to add a node to remove the node or to test whether the node is empty or not uh, so if we have a breadth first search, then um, this this the breadth first search class is going to implement um, the search strategy, and you can see you know, we have defined it as a list, simple list. So every time we have want to add a node, we just to add it to the back of the list. Then when we want to remove the node, it will be removed. The first node from the list will be removed, and uh, basically you can test for the empty as well. So uh, you can test over the empty thing as well, but um. This test is implicit in the set, that's why I'm not repeating the test over here. However, you can do this thing for, for more conciseness. And then we have to test whether the list is empty or not. If the list is empty, then we are not going to fetch anything from it. Then that means that we are done and our result is a failure. We haven't found a solution. Similarly, if you look at depth first search, then you will find um, the depth first search is just the, the only difference is that the depth first is using a stack as compared to a queue for breadth first search. And then you have this this thing, uh, and we know from a stack we push a node and then we pop a node and we verify that it's empty or not. And if we if we are using a uniform cost search, which uh, then uh, there is a comparator that will compare the, the main queue is is a priority queue. Then we have a comparator that comparator will compare nodes on basis of the path cost or the heuristic value that we will see in the next preview node, and then. The, the functions that that belongs to the priority queue, the, the add function, the remove function, and the is empty function. Okay, and you can see you know this is this something that is uh, independent of the problem that we are programming. For example, uh, there is a problem of path finding, and if if I show show you the state, so the the state is basically the location, the x y location in the in a two dimensional base. Okay, and then a heuristic value action and the implementation of these things. Okay. And then uh, the path problem. Then, then we can see the path problem is basically a maze, a two-dimensional maze of integers, where there's the location of the player, the location of the goal, and the number of nodes, and the number of columns, and and basically we have the initial state, uh, the function that finds the initial state, the functions that generate the successes. And I'm not going to discuss these things. Maybe this will you will you will work with these things in your exercises. And then a function to generate uh, uh, to uh, to uh, sorry to generate the location. So just let me a function to generate the successes. And this this function is, is just checking the the next move that you can do or start from a particular. So let me show you a demonstration of the, this implementation. Uh, this is the implementation. Uh, so we have read uh, the map from a text file. So I can just show you a text file like this. So this is a text file, or this this is a text file. So basically, this is a text file where these uh, these this character are representing the walls, and the empty spaces are representing the empty space, and this is the goal. And uh, this dot is the goal, and p is where we are starting. So we can just change the file to have a solution. Let's 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 start and see now how things work. So again, uh, you will see some. some uh, we are using breadth first. So the wide node that you are seeing are uh, are looking at the node that we are exploring. So you can see now the number of nodes that we are exploring as is is getting uh, higher, and uh, we are currently searching. The the solution is the red red uh, square that we want to find out. So basically, because we are searching the whole uh, uh, area breadth wise, so that's why now we have found the solution. The yellow yellow dots are representing basically the solution that has been found by breadth first. So okay, just remember one thing that we have explored about 778 nodes. The path length that we have found is 39 because the costs are equivalent for every action that would be considered. We are certain that this is the optimal path. Now, if we use depth first search, so if we use depth first search, you can see you know, with the, the, the behavior of the search is different. So it may explore the whole graph, but the behavior is different because searching depth wise. 
So you can you can replay this video and you can see the di difference between the behavior of death first search and breath first search. Eventually, the node uh, eventually it will it will it will find the it will find the goal. You can see k it has explored fewer number of nodes. The nodes explored are seven and sixteen as compared to seven seven and seventy eight of breath first search, but the path length is higher as well. So on the one hand you have this advantage that you are doing less amount of work. On the other hand you have this disadvantage that you are not getting the optimal solution. So uh, let us start with UCS as well. And uh, what you will see over UCS that there is not a lot difference between UCS and breadth first search. And you may be wondering why. And the answer is very simple because if the if the costs are constant, then essentially breadth first search is equal to UCS or UCS is equal to breadth first search. You will find that there is no difference between the slightly difference between amount of node that is getting fetched uh, from breadth first search or depth first search. But you can see uh, approximately the same amount of node has been explored and the path length is exactly the same. Like basically, the exactly the same path has been found by UCS as well. Okay. So we'll, we'll look into this thing uh, and, and again in, in, in a bit time. But now let, let me just show you the difference between where the UCS and uh, BFS will differ. So let me uh, explore another, another maze. Now this maze is different. Now you can see there are two colored uh, uh, rectangles over there. One is the, uh, the light blue colored and this is the dark blue colored. So again the idea is the light blue colored have a cost of 1. And moving to this dark blue uh, colored tile, the cost is 5. Okay. So now let's start with BFS. So let's start with BFS. And you can see like BFS is working pretty much the same because it's ignoring the cost. So for BFS, the light and the blue do not have any difference. The only difference is uh, how much note the length of the path. The length of the path is 20, which is uh, good or bad. I do not, it not matter by the way. So let's start with BFS. You can see now the depth first search could explore the whole thing and uh, eventually it has explored few nodes but the path length will be much higher as compared to this thing. Now this is the magic where the magic will happen. Now UCS. You can see it because UCS is predominantly trying to avoid this this uh, this higher cost path. You can see the path length is a bit higher than breadth first search but the cost is less the cost is only 27 as compared to bfs let me run bfs once more one more time so you can compare so for breadth first search the path length will be much lower it will be 20 but the cost is about 97 whereas for ucs the path length may be higher the path length is about 27 but the cost is on, so path is 26 is compared 20 but the path cost is much lower than what it has been for UCS. Now you can see the difference between um, UCS and breadth. Now if I increase the cost to much higher, let's say I increase the cost of the deep deep nodes to 10, you can see it will much avoid the blue nodes all that often. Eventually it will find the lowest cost. Okay. It does not matter, it will always find the lowest cost. But if I change it to 1, then you can see you now it will behave exact more or less exactly like BFS. So the, the, the path cost is equivalent, then then the cost is similar. Okay, so you can see you now with the path length is what is what matters is 20. TKG. So again, I hope you you understand this and this idea behind UCS and BFS. So again, we're going to move towards informed search in the next video. Thank you.